Hello everyone. This is Pratima and welcome back to Planet Physiology. Today we shall study how to determine hemoglobin content of the blood by using Sahli's method, a fundamental technique in hematology. There are several methods to estimate hemoglobin content in the blood. Each has its own advantages and limitations. The choice of the method depends on the factors such as the required accuracy, available resources and specific clinical or research needs. Amongst direct methods, one slick method which is gasometric method is the best and the most accurate method, but it is very costly and time consuming, hence used only for the research purpose. Indirect methods convert hemoglobin to some other colored compounds. Based on the intensity of the color of these compounds, hemoglobin content is estimated. Among indirect methods, Sinemeth hemoglobin method is the most accurate method as it measures all the forms of hemoglobin. Physical methods like copper sulfate method or hemoglobin color scale are qualitative methods used for mainly the screening purposes. Today I will discuss Sahli's method in detail under the following headings. Its principle, apparatus required, procedure, results, inference, precautions, advantages and limitation of the method and important viva questions. Let's start with the principle of Sahli's method. In this method, hemoglobin in known volume of the blood is converted to acid hematin by mixing it with N by 10 HCl that is 0.1 normal hydrochloric acid. The brown color of acid hematin is then diluted until its color matches with the standard plates. When the color matches with the standard, reading in the tube directly gives the hemoglobin value in the blood. So for this, we require Sahli's hemoglobinometer. Usually it comes as a set containing hemoglobinometer, hemoglobin tube, hemoglobin pipette, a stirrer and a bottle containing N by 10 HCl. We also require a dropper, distilled water, spirit, lancet and cotton. Each of these components play a crucial role in accuracy and efficiency of the test and hence it is essential to know them thoroughly. Sahli's hemoglobinometer is a specialized device used to compare the color intensity of acid hematin with the standard color. These are the standard comparator plates. Between these two plates, there is a space to accommodate hemoglobin tube. Backside of this comparator has an opaque white plate. It helps to match the color of acid hematin in the tube with the standard plates while holding it against the light. Now coming to the hemoglobin pipette. It is used to precisely collect 20 microliters of the blood. You can see this line marked as 20 cubic millimeter. This unit cubic millimeter is same as that of 20 microliter. The rubber tubing attached to the pipette aids in collecting the blood sample. This is hemoglobin tube. It is used to prepare mixture of blood sample and acid. Tube is marked with graduated yellow scale which is calibrated to express hemoglobin value in gram percentage. The unit is also mentioned on the top of the tube. If you observe these markings carefully, you will note that only the even numbers are mentioned on the scale and hence the middle lines between them are for odd numbers. For example, this lowest value is 2 and the next number is 4. So the middle line is for 3 gram percent. Further, there are four small markings between each gram percent marking, representing 0.2 gram percent. Hence, the tube has list count of 0.2 gram percent and hence the hemoglobin value by this method will always be in even number. For example, say 14.4 gram percent or 14.6 gram percent 
but it cannot be 14.5 gram percent please understand this well because many students commit this mistake while taking the readings on the opposite surface of the tube there is another scale in red and it gives the hemoglobin reading in terms of percentage of normal hemoglobin for example 15 gram percent hemoglobin is considered as 100 percent hemoglobin but the value of 100 percent hemoglobin may vary as per the manufacturer and hence the scale is not used routinely in this tube which i am using you can note that 100% value corresponds to 15 gram percent so here is a thought question for you why hemoglobin tube has this percentage marking if it is not used routinely you can find the answer and post in the comment section below okay coming to the stirrer stirrer is a thin glass rod used to mix the contents of the hemoglobin tube one end of the stirrer is flat and the other is round ideally the flat end of the stirrer is inserted into the hemoglobin tube and mixing is done by rotatory movement again many students mistakenly use round end of the stirrer for mixing and perform up and down movement be aware that up and down movement can break the tube now let's move on to the procedure first make sure that the apparatus is clean and dry also confirm that the pipette is patent this is easily checked by blowing through the mouthpiece and if you can feel the air current on the back of your hand pipette is patent so you can easily draw the blood into the pipette now take n by 10 hcl in hemoglobin tube up to the lowest mark that is 2 gram percent mark and place the tube in the hemoglobinometer This is the minimum quantity of acid required to form acid hematin from 20 microliter of the blood sample. Once this preparation is done, sterilize the fingertip with the spirit and take a bold finger prick with the help of lancet. Wipe off the first drop of the blood and allow next to form. Once a good size drop is formed, draw 20 microliters of the blood into the pipette. by applying a gentle suction force ensure the tip of the pipette remains within the blood drop and does not press against the fingertip this allows blood to enter the pipette without any air bubbles sometimes if blood drop is small or the pipette comes out of the drop while pipetting air bubble can enter the pipette as you can observe a small air bubble has entered in my pipette so don't worry just blow out the blood from the pipette on the fingertip till the bubble is removed and then continue to suck the blood sample again only make sure that you collect the blood quickly before it starts to clot it is highly necessary to collect exact 20 microliter of the blood as the apparatus and the procedure is standardized for this quantity of blood sample presence of air bubbles reduces the amount of blood and hence gives the false lower value once the blood sample is collected wipe off the blood from the tip of the pipette and immediately transfer it into the hemoglobin tube for this take the tube in one hand and insert the pipette till the end of the tube and blow out the blood sample into the acid remember that we have already taken acid into the tube Rinse the pipette gently by drawing the acid and blowing it back into the tube for two or three times. This transfers the entire blood from the pipette into the tube. This is another point where students commit mistake. They blow out the drop at the top of the tube itself. So this doesn't transfer the entire blood sample into the acid and gives false lower value. Now take out the pipette and insert the stirrer into the tube. with its flat end inside mix the content by rotatory action of the stirrer once the stirrer is placed inside the tube keep it inside the tube throughout the experiment to prevent loss of the contents so leave the stirrer in the tube and place the tube back into the hemoglobinometer and wait for 10 minutes during this time acid causes hemolysis 
and converts hemoglobin to acidematin although the color change is immediate as you can note the reaction takes 10 minutes to complete during this 10 minutes time 95% of the hemoglobin gets converted to acid hematin okay now the 10 minutes are over and you can note that the color of acid hematin is dark brown and it should be diluted to match with the standard plates so now we take one drop of distilled water add it to the tube and mix it with the help of stirrer so obviously it is very dark so we can add one more drop of the water mix with the stirrer for comparing whether the color has matched with the standard plates or not hemoglobinometer is held in such a way that fingers are not covering the white surface behind hold the apparatus in your hand and outstretch your hand and apparatus should be at the level of eye adjust the tube in such a way that the plane surface of the tube faces you and the scale doesn't interfere in the color matching So with this position if the solution is still darker as in this case add another drop of distilled water and repeat the procedure until the color of the solution exactly matches with the standard plates Once the color matches exactly with the standard take out the hemoglobin tube lift up the stirrer above the solution and read the gram percent that is yellow scale note the reading where lower meniscus of the solution corresponds to the scale record this value as hemoglobin content in the blood if you are not sure whether this color is exactly matched or not note this reading and then add one more drop of the distilled water mix the content and match the color again if this color is perfectly matching then record this value as your hemoglobin content but if the color is lighter take the previous reading as your hemoglobin content so this is the end of the procedure we have got our result in this case the hemoglobin content is 12.8 g per deciliter Now compare this value with the normal value of hemoglobin to determine whether the hemoglobin content is within the normal limits lesser or higher So as in this case the reading is 12.8 g percent and this is the sample from a female compare it with normal range for female So based on these two values I can infer that hemoglobin content is within the normal range Okay I have already discussed various precautions throughout the video but let us see them all together Always take n by 10 hcl up to 2 g percent mark in the tube before pricking the finger Collect the blood sample in the pipette till 20 cubic millimeter mark without any air bubble Immediately transfer the entire blood into the acid in the tube This prevents blood clotting inside the pipette Wait for 10 minutes for reaction to complete. Dilution of the content should be gradual because in case of over dilution you have to repeat the entire procedure. 
always lift the stirrer above the solution while matching the color as well as while taking the reading keep the stirrer within the tube throughout the experiment with its flat end inside and mix the contents by rotatory action match the color by facing the plane surface of the tube against the daylight and record the value on the tube corresponding to the lower meniscus now let's see the advantages of sahali's method the procedure is very easy to perform as you have already witnessed it is quick and cost effective but it has got many limitations as well which are sahali's method has error of about 5 to 10% because within 10 minutes only 95% of the hemoglobin is converted to acidematin also this method estimates only oxyhemoglobin and reduced hemoglobin but not the other forms since this method involves visual color matching subjective errors may be present and if the apparatus is very old color plates may fade out and give false high value here are some important viva questions which are routinely asked in the practical exams That's all for today. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Are you new to my channel? Then please subscribe it and press the bell icon to stay updated about the new releases. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Thank you for joining in and see you in the next video.